Data annotation validators were popular in ASP.NET MVC and continue to be an efficient way of doing model validation in ASP.NET Core. We'll show you how to use them and how to write a custom one. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn .NET, Dependency Injection and Blazor WebAssembly with Round the Code's online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. So we've created our customer model and this will be passed in as a parameter in our action. We've already got a couple of default annotations here. So we've got required and we've also got email address. Now, in order to use data annotations, you need to import the system.componentmodels.data annotations assembly. So here we're checking and making sure that the first name has a value, but we could also specify um, the minimum length of it. So we want at least three characters for that and the maximum length of 30. We can also do the same for surname, but we're going to change the max length from 30 characters to 50. And down here, we've got a zip code. We want that to have five numbers so we can use the regular expression attribute and we can put regular expression in there. So we want to have five numbers in there so we can present it like that. And that will now validate. So we've created a web API controller and we've named it customer controller. And within that, we've got a create action. The create action has a parameter as a customer model type. What this does is it will validate against each of the data annotations in the properties. Assuming it's successful, it will return a 200 response with the customer model instance. Let's give the application a run and see it in action. With the application running, let's see what happens if we don't pass all the data annotation validators. So we're going to leave the first name and the surname empty, and we're also going to add too many numbers in the zip code. So we can see we're returning a 400 response and it's got a list of some of the errors. So the surname, the field is required. It also requires a minimum length of three. And with the first name, it's a similar story. The zip code must match the regular expression that's in there, which it's not doing. Let's go ahead now and fix some of this. So let's put the first name in, the surname in, and a valid zip code. As we can see, it's now returning a 200 response and it's returning our instance. Data attribute validators like required and min length are part of .NET. For more complex validation, you can write your own custom one. And that's what we've done here. We've created customer date of birth validation. It's inheriting the validation attribute. What this is going to do is it's going to check that the customer is at least 18 years old. So to do this, we're going to override one of the is valid methods, and we're going to override the one that returns a validation result type. What this does is it can return a success or a custom error message. The first thing is we're going to check that the value, we're going to convert the value into a string and see if it's empty. If it is empty, we just return a success as we can use the required data attribute to use to check that there is a value for it. Then we're going to go ahead and convert it into a date time type. If it can't pass it, it throws an error saying unable to convert the date of birth to a valid date. We're then going to work out the minimum date of birth based on the minimum age and today's date. If the date of birth is bigger than the minimum date of birth, we throw a validation result with an error message. The error message says the customer is younger than 18 years old. And assuming everything's fine, it just returns a validation.success. We've now added this onto the customer model. We specified the data type as data type.date. We want it to be required, so we want a value for the date of birth. And then we've got our customer date of birth validation. Let's give this a run and see how it works. With the application running, today's date is the 24th of February, 2023. If we execute that, we're returning a 400 response and the error is saying the customer is younger than 18 years old. Let's change that now to 2005. And if we execute that, we're now returning a 200 response. It's passed the validation. To download the code sample in this video and many more .NET code examples, go to roundthecode.com slash .NET hyphen samples.
Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.